entirely unknown, Cecily, who now views an educational remarkable strict, has brought me up to be extremely short-sighted. So, do you mind my looking at you carefully? Oh, not at all, Gwendolyn. I'm very fond of being looked at. You are here on a short visit, I suppose. Oh, no. I live here. Really? Your mother, no doubt. Or some female relative beside yourself, so. Oh, no. I have no mother, nor, in fact, any relation. Indeed? My dear guardian, with the assistance of Miss Prism, has the task of looking after me. Your guardian? Yes, sir. I am Mr. Wilkins Walter. Oh, it's strange. He never mentioned to me that he had a word. How secretive of him. He grows more interesting hourly. Cecily, I am very fond of you. I have liked you ever since I met you. But now that I know that you are Mr. Wolfing's word, I cannot help expressing a wish that you are, well, just a little older than you seem to be. In fact, if I may speak candidly, I pray do. I think that whenever one has anything unpleasant to say, one should always be quite candid. Well, to speak with candor, Cecily, I wish that you were fully 42. Ernest is the very soul of true fondana, but even men of the noblest moral character are extremely susceptible to the influence of the physical charms of others. I beg your pardon, Gwendolyn. Did you say Ernest? Yes. But it is not Mr. Ernest who I think who is my guardian. It is his brother, his elder brother. Ernest never mentioned to me that he had a brother. I'm sorry to say they've not been on good terms for a long time. Oh, and now that I think of it, I have never heard any man mention his brother. You have reefed a lot from my mind. Of course, you are quite, quite sure that it is not Mr. Ernest who is your guardian. Quite sure. In fact, I am going to be his. I beg your pardon? Dearest Gwendolyn, there is no reason why I should make a secret of it to you. But Mr. Ernest Wilfing and I are engaged to be married. My dear Cecily, I think there must be some slight like error. Mr. Ernest Wilfing is engaged to me. I'm afraid. Ernest proposed to me exactly. Ten minutes ago. It's very curious. For he asked me to be his wife yesterday afternoon at half past five. If you would care to verify the incident, pray do so. I never travel without my diary. I'm so sorry, dear Cecily, but I'm afraid I have the prior claim. I feel bound to point out that. Since Ernest proposed to you, he clearly has changed up his mind. If the poor fellow has been entrapped into any foolish promise, I shall consider it my duty to rescue him at once. I will never reproach him with it after we are married. You are presumptuous. Do you suggest, Miss Fairfax, that I entrap Ernest into an engagement? How dare you? It's obvious that power such as fears have been wildly different. Are there many interesting walks in the vicinity, Miss Cardew? Oh, yes. From the top of one of the hills, one can see five counties. Five counties? I don't think I should like that. I hate crowds. I suppose that is why I live in town. Quite a well kept garden, this is Miss Cardew. So glad you like it, Miss Fairfax. I have no idea there were any flowers in the country. All flowers are as common here, Miss Fairfax, as people are in London. May I offer you some tea, Miss Fairfax? Yes, thank you. Detestable girl, but very quiet. Sugar? No, thank you. Oh. 
all bread and butter. Bread and butter, please. <laughs> and that is fair. and you have given me cake. I warn you, Scardi, you may go too far. The same as poor, innocent boy, from the machinations of any other girl. There are no lengths to which I would not go. From the moment I saw you, I said that you were false. My first impression of people are invariably right. Seems to me, Miss Fairfax, that I'm trespassing on your valuable time. Well, you don't. A moment. May I ask if you are engaged to be this young lady? To dear little Cecil? Of course not. What could have put such an idea into your pretty little head? Thank you. You may. And um, there must be some misunderstanding, Miss Fairfax. The gentleman, John, is at the present to Andrew Is He's my guardian, Mr. John Worthing. I beg your pardon? This is Uncle Jack. Jack. Oh, here is it, Miss. My own love. Good morning, Travis. May I ask you, are you engaged to be married to this young lady? To a young lady? Oh, good heavens, Gwendolyn. Yes, good heavens, Gwendolyn. Oh. I mean to Gwendolyn. Of course not. Oh, what, could I put such an idea into your pretty little head? Thank you. Good man. I felt there was some slight terror, Miss Cardew. The gentleman who is now embracing you is my cousin. Mr. Algernon Moncrief. Algernon Moncrief. I'm caught, Algernon. I cannot deny it. Is your name really John? I could deny it if I liked, but my name certainly is John. It has been John for years. <laughs> Gross deception it has been practiced on both of us. It's quite clear. Cecily, that neither of us are engaged to be married to anyone. You will call the sister, won't you? There is just one question I would like to ask my guardian. An excellent idea. Mr. Worthing, where is your brother Ernest? We are both engaged to be married to your brother Ernest. So it is important to us to know where your brother Ernest is at present. Roger, Cecily, it is very painful for me to be forced to speak the truth, but now there is no escape at all. I will tell you quite frankly, I have no brother at all. No brother at all? None. Had you never a brother of any kind? Never. Oh, it's quite clear, Cecily, that neither of us are engaged to be married to anyone. It is not a very pleasant position for a young girl suddenly to find herself in, is it? No. Men are so cowardly, aren't they? This terrible state of things is what you call bambury, I suppose. Yes, and a perfectly wonderful bambury it is. Well, you have no right to bambury here. Oh, that's absurd. One has the right to bambury anywhere one chooses. And as for your conduct toward Miss Cadu, I must say that you are taking in a nice, simple, innocent girl like that it is quite inexcusable. What? I can see no possible defense for deceiving a brilliant, clever young lady like Miss Fairfax. I wanted to be engaged to Gwendolyn, that is all. I love her. And I don't want 